So Dwayne, the other day, uh, Sam had asked how to clean the permanent oil filter, and I had to do mine. I have a big trip coming up. I had to get uh, do an oil change anyway, so I just put a piece of cardboard down, put a drain pan, and one of the nice things about these oil filters is they have a nut on the end. So I just put a uh, socket on there, loosened it up. Mm -hmm. Now this application shows the oil filter installed on our DK Custom oil filter relocation kit. But the cleaning process is the same if the oil filter is in the oh, oil yeah. location. Yeah, this is just a nice setup because look, at, there's no mess going anywhere. It's just, I loosen it, let the oil drain into the drain pan before I take it all the way off. And that's the benefit of the oil filter relocation. But once the oil filter's off, it doesn't matter you know, where you had it installed. The cleaning process is the same. But obviously, you don't have to clean the bike up after you change the oil when you have the oil filter relocation. So I've just let all the oil drain out. And then you can see here where after I get the oil filter off, dump some of the oil out. So this filter has a magnet built in. It's called a pre-filter. And you can see right here where I'm going to run my finger across the magnet and show the little medical particles that never even got to the filter element. That's pretty good. I'm happy to see that little bit of metal for how hard I've ridden it over the last 4,000 miles since I did the last oil change. Now, as you can see, the filter element is spring loaded. You push it down, rotate, and it pops out of its socket. And here you'll see we're just getting the hot water going to uh, dilute the oily residue. Pulling the filter out, pulling the spring out. First thing I'm gonna do is just take a paper towel with some hot water and just clean any of the residue that didn't, you know, oily residue out of the inside of the canister. After the residual oil is cleaned from the inside of the billet aluminum filter housing, we will begin to clean the filter element. So that's hot water, and it's just hot water right now. And I'm going to put some soap in there just to cut the oil. Run some hot, more hot water through it. Hit it with the toothbrush. Make sure everything's clean. Sometimes it's best to not let your old lady know that you cleaned the oil filter in the kitchen sink. Yeah, Mary wasn't there when I was doing this. But I've done this in motel sinks. I've done it in parking lots with carburetor cleaner. Um, I found when I first started cleaning these, I used carburetor cleaner, just a spray can of carburetor cleaner a lot. I thought it was easier, but I found that this is much, much easier to do. I mean, the whole process takes less time, far less time than it would take to go to the store and buy another filter. It even takes less time than it would take to get on Amazon and purchase a filter and then get the package, open the package up. I mean, we're talking, you know, maybe 10, maybe 10 minutes to do it. The thing about doing it with the carburetor cleaner, it works very well, but I just don't like the smell. And also, where's that carburetor cleaner going to go? It's going to end up on a driveway or over some grass or something. It's worth noting that the filter element is made of a stainless steel medical grade mesh. So the solvent isn't going to damage the filter media. That little ball bearing at the very end of the filter element is the bypass valve, which very rarely gets used on these. That only ha It's only used if something were to clog up the filter element and you, to let the oil continue flowing through the engine. Now on the paper factory elements, it works almost every time you start it up or when you're at high RPM because the paper elements have so much restriction that to get the oil to flow, that bypass valve has to open up almost every time you run the bike. But because this mesh, it flows so easily through the stainless steel mesh, the bypass valve very rarely, if ever, actuates. But it has to be there in case something were to clog up the filter element. So the last thing I do is after I get it all put back together, is take it out and I use, you can either put the filter element in front of a fan, let it take a half hour or so to dry out in front of a fan, or you can use compressed air. And what I'm doing right here is using compressed air just to blow out any of the water before putting it back together. 
we do sell the filter elements separately. So rather than waiting on the filter element to be dried, you can go ahead and replace it, reinstall your oil filter, and have the previously removed filter element on standby for the next oil change. Then when you're done, you put it in, push it down, twist it, the spring pushes it back up, and that's it. And you can see here, I like to fill the filter element about halfway full before I screw it back on just so it's not totally dry. This oil filter is equipped with a square shaped proprietary O-ring. We also like to lubricate that before installing the filter element. And I filled it a little bit more than halfway. So you can see when I put the filter back on, some stuff, some oil started leaking back out. But again, it wasn't a problem with the oil filter relocation. It just went into the drain pan. And I only tighten it hand tight. You won't see me using a wrench putting it back on. Hand tight. And that's it, Sam. Really easy. Really easy. The last oil filter you'll ever buy. If you like the video, hit that notification bell so you'll be updated when our next video comes out. Subscribe to our channel because it really helps us out. Y'all ride safe out there.